Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my thoughts on Path of Exile's uh, patch notes for 3.22. So uh, we have just finished up with Crucible and we are moving on into the new league, Trial of the Ancestors. So to save you guys a lot of time, there have been no changes to Righteous Fire, Fire Trap, Inquisitor, or Juggernaut. So pretty much safe there. Um, there are some s slight tweaks on the tree. So I think we'll have to spend one more point. So I guess minus one level, maybe a nerf, right? If you look at it that way, but we're, we're getting tattoos in this patch. So yeah, um, as always, I'm not gonna go through everything listed here. I do have a little bit of a notes that I kind of took from. So we're gonna go ahead and pull from here. And there's, I'll be honest, there's really not much in here. I would say the biggest takeaways from this league, um, since it doesn't seem like balance has really changed much, is sanctum is back so the new scent well the sanctum uniques that were out before are in now so anything you kind of played in sanctum i would imagine you could play now so that means eternal damnation lore weave explode rf elementalist will actually be a thing that i will cover i plan on making it as my second character um and some other things to take away from are uh i don't really know actually sanctum i guess is a big one. Oh, sorry the new atlas keystone passives there's one I took some notes and I completely blanked even though they're right in front of my face. So since they're, like I said, there wasn't really a big balance patch overhaul, they kind of just added some new stuff. Um, so we're gonna just go ahead and look at them. So one of the cool ones here is Extreme Archaeology, which is basically a mega expedition uh, node you can do. Normally in expedition, you have to like place one, place one, place one, place one. You wanna do it strategically because the first one you place explodes and then all the bonuses from the first one go to the second and then third, fourth, etc. This kind of like really just makes it much simpler. Uh, so for people who want to focus more on, you know, click one button, then kaboom a bunch of monsters and then continue fighting, this is really good. Also, one thing to note that I feel nobody really talks about much is party play. Um, part of the reason I play Trade League is to play with my friends, you know, just for fun. And Expedition really ruins the immersion of, you know, you're mapping with your friend and then all of a sudden you get to an Expedition and you're like, hold up, man, you know, go use the restroom for a few minutes while I do this. This will just be like, you know, you'll look for the spot, you'll place it, it kabooms, and you go fight and then you go back to your map. So that's pretty cool. I, I actually really like this. Uh, next up, we've got, um, and I, I haven't looked at all of them. I'm just pulling the ones that are a bit more interesting to me. So Destructive Play, which grants Maven summons one to three additional bosses when witnessing map bosses. This is pretty interesting because I'm really curious how this ties into Maven 10 ways. When I play SSF, some of the things that, you know, when I'm trying to farm my Maven, essentially I have like Conqueror rotations, Guardian rotations, Elder Guardian rotations, um, Shaper Guardian, I don't remember how many, there's three different types. But at some point I like doing Maven 10 ways because maybe I, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm just chilling out. I'm really curious how Maven Witnessing applies to these and if these can drop Awakened Gems because regular map bosses who are witnessed by Maven can. And I'm curious if this ties towards Maven 10 ways because that means you could potentially run three maps and have a Maven 10 way, which is pretty interesting or four maps, right? So I I'm really curious about this on how this works. Actually, yeah, three because it's additional. So you could get four in one map. So this is something I'm very excited for. Um, this one here, add a new Atlas Keystone Passive, All Hands, which grants your maps a 40% chance to contain a random master encounter. Modifiers to chance to grant additional master mission on map completion instead applies for chance for that master to randomly be encountered at 150% of its value. And you do not gain master missions when completed. I actually really like this because in the early league, one of the big things I like to do is spawn Betrayal, also known as Jun. Um, a big part of this for my gearing is to unlock some of the really important unveils like uh, Corel physical damage taken as fire helmet, Gravicious 6% physical and lightning or physical damage taken as fire and lightning, um, plus one area gems on helmet, fire multi on your weapon, minimum frenzy, min anyway you get it. This will hopefully make it so I can spawn them more frequently in the early game so I can get those when I when I really want them and then remove the keystone when I'm finished with that part of gearing and moving on into other stuff. Rather than me just hoarding up a bunch of them and then never really using them, I would rather get it right now when I want it, right? So pretty excited for this one. Um, added a new passive keystone, Cassius Pride, which grants Blight monsters in your maps take less damage from players and their minions, and Blight Towers deal 300% more damage. Now, you could already clear Blight with just towers. This just makes it even more of a tower defense and more of like strategically positioning things. 
I suspect this will make it way easier to clear Blight Ravaged maps in SSF, so this is pretty cool. And for players who ever struggled with Blight with RF, now you should not struggle ever because your towers just instigib literally everything. So this is pretty interesting. Um, add a new keystone, Endless Tide, which grants beyond portals in your maps cannot spawn unique bosses, and beyond portals in your maps have less merging radius. I wonder if this overall increases the beyond density, because I think beyond mobs stop spawning when the boss has been summoned. So if the boss never summons, do you overall get more beyond mobs? thus increasing monster density, because that is pretty cool. Especially when you play Ignite Prolif builds, um, like my Explode RF build, when you kill a pack of mobs and then a Beyond spawns and then the Beyond dies from the proliferation, that just kind of makes mapping so much more juicy. So I'm very excited for this. Add a new, uh, sorry, Atlas Keystone Passive, Immutable Dogma, which grants cannot reroll favors at Ritual, uh, and monsters sacrifice get 100% more tribute. I find this to be something that is really good for newer players, I would say. Uh, and not even just newer players, but people who don't care about the reroll feature. They want to just clear the ritual, take the items, and move on. This is something that's really nice for that, because you're basically getting two times tribute, and you're just buying out whatever is on the page and moving on. So kind of like more simple gameplay, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Add a new Alice Keystone Passive Unending Nightmare, which grants Delirium Fog in your map never dissipates. Delirium Orbs cannot be found, and Simulacrum Splinters cannot be found. I also really like this one. Um, a lot of the times I do a Grand Design Atlas, uh, and in Grand Design I also spec Delirium because it synergizes really well with like 70% pack size. But I don't feel like I always want to be pressured into racing the Delirium and clearing my map in a really weird way, only to have to backtrack and pick up all the loot. So I really like this. I'm kind of sad you can't get Deli Orbs, but I understand. I hate Simulacrum, so I don't mind this at all. I added a new Keystone Passive Timeless Conflict, which grants Legion encounters in your maps have no timer. Breaking out monsters and chests that are in stasis progressively causes a schism and Legion encounters in your maps begin once the schism has occurred. Now, this is pretty interesting because just recently I've been doing a new strategy in SSF, uh, not necessarily something that's, you know, amazing or crazy, but something that still works, which is actually rushing Legion in like high tier red maps. And the purpose of this is to build up Legion four ways so I can eventually aim for my Legion jewels, whether it's Gloria's Vanity, Lethal Pride, um, Brutal Restraint, there we go. All three of them offer something very good. And Incubators. Legion is very good for dropping six link incubators, which can only be body armors. It does not pick weapons, so no two-handers. And this is actually how I've gotten my six links quite a few times in SSF to get started. This keystone, I'm hoping, will allow me to pop the Legion and kind of look around for where, you know, because it'll spawn rare monsters on one side, rare monsters on the other. And while you're progressing your Atlas, you're not just like picking one specific map, like say, Dunes, Legion, let's go. Dunes, Legion, let's go. You're getting Legion to spawn on these weird ass maps when you're just doing completion. So you're in like a bone crypt and, you know, the Legion is spawned in all around the map and you have to go all the way around. And some people are going to say that's a time waste, but, you know, what if you kind of peek a corner and you see two mobs with an incubator and you're still progressing you know you'll go walk around and go kill those mobs hit the incubator and i actually really like this this is cool it makes it so that if your build cannot just like one tap a legion and pop all of it it still doesn't feel super bad so another pro for me i really like this one Add a new Alice Keystone passive crop rotation, which grants harvest crops in your maps contain only tier one plants and harvesting crops in your maps has a chance to upgrade the tier of plants of a different color. This one is very unique. I definitely think I will try it when I'm trying to get specific colors. So basically everything starts off as just poopy, right? And then you would clear a harvest plot. So say you clear a blue harvest plot, your um, yellow and your red or pink, purple, whatever you want to call it, have a chance of going up in tier, which means more life force. So this is something that's pretty interesting as well. Um, pretty curious. I don't know how well, I'm, like how well it's going to end up, but pretty curious. Add a new Atlas Keystone Passive Overloaded Circuits, which grants uh, League Map Crafting Options. Also choose three random notable Atlas Passives associated with that League uh, to treat as allocated. So this is very interesting because let's say Essence, for example. I think Essence only has four keys, like four notable spots. So if you take one of them and then you pick this, 
it makes it so essence will go from two chaos to four but automatically allocate the three other notables this is where i'm curious if it can pick the same notable you have surely it would not it would just pick of the other ones you don't have but you know if there's say five it'll pick three out of the five right this is something else that's pretty interesting to potentially save a lot of points on travel again something just very unique uh added a new atlas keystone passive meticulous appraiser which grants modifiers to quantity of items found in your maps instead apply to rarity at 300 percent value this looks awesome so one of the cool things about this again ssf player sorry um as an SSF player, there's sometimes items I'm trying to find that are not necessarily very rare, but they just don't drop. So, Immortal Flesh, Saffle's Frame, um, I'll just stop there, right? This right here, so say you pair this with Rogue Exiles, say your map has 40% quantity, and you'd be thinking to yourself, well, 40% quantity is, you know, 40% more items. That's true, but 40% quantity turns into 120% rarity, which is more than double of a chance, you know, of, of the item turning into whatever its tier is, right? So this is something pretty interesting as well. I'm very curious on how this one is going to feel in SSF, especially when you pair it with Possessed Rogue Exiles. I'm just very curious on how all of this quantity, sorry, um, rarity is going to stack. So something else that's interesting. Added a new Atlas Keystone passive, the Seventh Gate, which grants all possible League map crafting options are available while six gateways are allocated. So gateways essentially on the Atlas are the ones that, you know, say you're on the Eater in the top right and you click the little gateway and it shoots you over to Exarch for one skill point. That's what those are. I don't fully know what this means. All possible League map crafting options are available while six gateways are allocated. I feel like it's got to be... Pretty much anything that they have put on the Atlas device before that is part of the game will be back. So like say Blight is not on this uh, on the uh, Hirak stuff this go around. I think if you have this, you could force Blight to be on there. That's my guess. So kind of interesting. Not sure how much I'll use it, but seems pretty interesting. Uh, then I guess like a couple of other notable things here. Shaper Guardians, Elder Guardians, and Conquerors now drop fewer influence items on death. I don't like this uh, in uh, SSF. When I'm trying to progress for Inquisitor, I really want, like, say, a life gain on block Shaper Shield, which requires me to get a good base with, you know, Shaper influence on it, or I can do some other stuff with Harvest. Um, when you have a map that's, like, say, Forge of the Phoenix, there's probably, at most, one or two influence items dropping in the whole map, sometimes none, and then a big surge from the Guardian itself. I don't like this because it says far fewer influence items on death so i guess they're just trying to make the grind more difficult to get those items <clears throat> which you know hopefully it, it feels okay uh, i'm specifically also now talking about like the rf elder helm is very very important i can see more potential use coming from harvest to reforge influence so say you get a really good armor based helmet but it is influenced by al hesman which is uh hunter which is the green one you can use harvest to reforge the influence to turn it into elder so i i can definitely see myself using that a lot more unique maps no longer are offered as a mission when re-rolling uh kirak's mission with explorer scouting reports i don't really like this because it's so hard to get damn unique maps already in ssf but hey i guess that's kind of life right not too big of a deal i hope the vault temple map can no longer be obtained outside of corruption vault side areas or divination cards <clears throat> another one that's i kind of don't like but that's okay i remember you know running my blighted maps you would often find vault temples and i forgot where else and vault temples are kind of fun to run right they're they're fun um i guess what i probably will do is my maps that i don't really care much for i will just like alk or chisel alk vol and hope they turn into vault temple like map layouts i do not like at all right and one other one here so this one is a, a nerf to Juggernaut Righteous Fire. Very minor nerf, like super minor. And I don't know if it even matters super late game, but the Champion of the Cause and Bannerman Cluster has now been moved to Lava Lash's old location. So that means this aura cluster right here, specifically this baby node that people always forget and then say that they can't fit the auras, is being moved to here. So we have to spend one extra passive to come right here. Very minor, not a super big deal, right? Just one extra point. So that's pretty much about it. 
Um, other than that, uh, there are a few other things, but I can't really remember all of them, so nothing really that crazy. And then I believe I just wanted to really quickly go over the map changes. So the Atlas changes, the following maps have been added back to the Atlas. Academy, uh, don't care for. Acid Caverns, I actually like a lot. Acid Caverns is pretty cool. Arena, no thanks. Basilica, no thanks. Bazaar, no thanks. Bog is okay. No thanks on Cage. Although, maybe Cage is okay. No thanks on Carcass. Uh, no thanks Chanel or Channel. Courthouse, Dark Force is okay. Estuary, Forking River. Glacier is pretty cool. Uh, grave whatever. Grave Graveyard is kind of okay. It's like Cemetery, I think. Haunted Mansion is a really good one. Iceberg is awesome. Ivory Temple is uh, is okay. Lava Chamber, I don't care for. Lava Lake is okay. Uh, Lookout, no thanks. Um, Mausoleum, actually Mausoleum is pretty good. Mesa is awesome. Mud Geyser is okay. Alice, no thanks. Pen is good. I think Reef is pretty good too. Spider Forest is okay. Summit, um, I don't remember Summit's layout. Sunken City, no thank you. Vault is okay. Uh, and then Waterways. The following maps have been removed, though. Arid Lake, ouch. Armory, ouch. I don't care about Arsenal, Belfry, ouch. Canyon, ouch. Um, Conservatory, Core Ruins, Core. Crater, one of my favorite maps. Uh, Crimson Township, Crystal Ore, another good map. Defile Cathedral, ouch. Uh, Desert Spring, Dig, Dry Sea, Fields. Fields is pretty good. Forbidden Woods, Foundry, Grotto is awesome. Jungle Valley, Laboratory, Lair, Lighthouse, Marshes, Overgrown Ruin, Plaza, Ramparts, Relic Chambers, Scriptorium, Shipyard, Shrine, Toxic Sewers, and Waste Pool are also gone. So kind of sad, but, you know, we'll have fun in the new Atlas, hopefully, right? Kind of sad. I really love these two. These two plus Crater are by far my favorite. Like Crater, Toxic Sewer, and Waste Pool. Oh my god, I could play RF all day there. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'm going to be super busy over the next coming days pushing out some more updated RF content. Even though there's not a crazy amount to update necessarily because there weren't a big amount of changes, that doesn't mean that I haven't found new ways to improve the build, more so improve the early game for newer players and just explain things a bit more. Also, I will most likely be playing an RF Inquisitor this go around because we've played Juggernaut so much. And since I have recently just played Inquisitor, I've got some stuff I want to change with that guide as well. You can expect me to have a lot of content out, specifically the uh, RF Inquisitor leveling guide, kind of like the Jug guide. I won't be redoing the Jug guide because really nothing changed from the leveling process, but the Inquisitor, I will most likely have a six hour campaign run, maybe seven, maybe eight, I have no clue. Um, but that's something that's gonna be underway. So anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. If you did, of course, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.